Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Lucy of Warrior Goddess. Right now, we have a missing 15-year-old autistic male teenage boy, Sebastian Rogers. He has been missing since February 26. The morning, that morning of, his mother, Miss Proudfoot, went into his bedroom to get him ready for school and tell him get up as many of us mothers do and the child the teen was nowhere to be found he was missing now there's something that just does not add up about this story and this is just my opinion the house the doors were locked Sebastian is a high-functioning autistic teenager, but he doesn't wander around. He's 15 years old. There's never been an episode like this, ever. The mother, once she realizes that her son is gone, if in fact that this is the way this occurred, says... She checks around and the, the doors, there's nothing of out of the ordinary is what I'm trying to say. The doors are still locked. So tell me, as a mother myself, how did Sebastian get out of the house? Now she did say the night before at about 10 o'clock, she heard a thud in his room and then she said, son, are you okay? He said, I'm fine. She said, we'll knock it off and go to bed. Of course, that's how many of us speak to our children. That's not being ugly. It's just like, hey, it's time to go to bed. You got school in the morning. So the things that are bothering me is why would the stepfather, I know he works out of town, why would he decide to leave town and his wife, Miss Proudfoot, follow suit? Tell me, that's not a red, red flag. Tell me why. That's my big question. And Nancy Grace asks why also. And I think Miss Proudfoot said that she was getting horrible messages, I think threats, and she wanted to be with her husband. Well, me, there's no way in H -E -L that I would leave my home knowing that my son is missing, knowing that he could show up and come back to the house and I would not be there to embrace him the other thing Nancy Grace asked um, the family, the bio family, is why they don't show emotion or why they don't look directly into the cameras. And they're often just looking off. And, and that's a sign of when you're looking off, you're trying to think of what next are you going to say? You're thinking of a good answer to say which Nancy Grace's questioning has been very simple and the mother said that um, she has cried so much that she I think she said she felt numb now the bio mother has taking a polygraph test and states that she has passed that test. The stepfather has not taken a polygraph test yet, but he said, tell me the time and the date and I will show up. 
So we've got many searchers out there. We've got people that, of course, show up. TikTokers, YouTubers, they say that they're there for good, but we all know it's for content for their channel because many of them that are even being put on the news have done nothing ever and have never solved a case. So I look at them as just grandstanders and I, I don't think that they should even be there. We call them tragedy pimps in my, my community that I'm from. Sorry, my throat's frogged up. So, so let's continue. In an interview on Crime Stories with Nancy Grace on Monday, Katie and Chris Proudfoot were questioned about their whereabouts that night, as well as their cooperation with the investigation into the boy's disappearance. The host also asked if they could confirm reports that they had packed up their RV and left their home to Hendersonville. No, left their home in Hendersonville. Now, Mr. Proudfoot stated, I want to go back to work. And the mother saying she was accompanying her husband before returning home. She stated, my son is anywhere, could be anywhere, and we're looking everywhere and anywhere. Ms. Proudfoot said of her decision to leave. Now, listen to that comment. My son could be anywhere, which is true, and we're looking everywhere and anywhere, Ms. Proudfoot said of her decision to leave. Now, I just dropped my phone. That was her decision to leave. Now, yes, he could be anywhere, anywhere but something's just so fishy about this story i can't grasp onto it because there's no way like i said in h-e-w-l that i would leave my home unless it was in the, the vicinity of that county searching for my son putting up flyers. I know that the United Cajun Navy has came in and they kind of wanted people to stand down and let them do it strategically themselves. So I don't know the ins and outs. I know there's a few YouTubers walking around live streaming um, for their own content. Um, these YouTubers have never solved anything. So if you're, you're just watching their channels for some non-fact checked information, you can continue. But this is just very bizarre because I as a mother could never ever leave my home. I would, it, I would split if I felt like like she's saying, he could be anywhere, then why not let your husband go where you think he might be anywhere and you stay at home in case your precious son comes home. Now, it's also been stated she thinks that somebody, somebody has her son. Now, I wonder what makes her think that. Me, it, and it's just speculation and just my own theory and thoughts, this couple knows more than they're saying. Because this is just, this does not add up. And for the bio mother, 
I don't know what kind of relationship she had with the ex-husband, Seth Rogers, but he's saying that they will not communicate whatsoever with him. That's another red flag. I don't care how much of discord or what kind of bad divorce you had. When you have children involved, you adult. You adult and you communicate for the best health of the child. Psychologically, physically, emotionally. So let's see what else this story is saying um, she said her son could be anywhere um, she, like I said she thinks somebody had taken him or that he possibly wandered off alone which he's never did before so why would all of a sudden at 15 years old this autistic high-functioning autistic teenager all of a sudden out of the blue decide to just wander off it doesn't add up she told the podcast crime stories with nancy grace i feel like if he had been close to the house or had walked off that we would have found him by now with as many people that had been searching Ms. Proudfoot said she heard a thud, like I said before, and she told her son to go to bed. So the search is still on in Hendersonville. They often, as they're searching, they play Sebastian's favorite song. And his favorite song is The Eye of the Tiger. As they look for him in the hope of attracting his attention. The teenager is, as I stated before, a high-functioning autistic teenager, boy, teenage boy. So anyone with information on Sebastian's whereabouts is encouraged to contact Sumner County Sheriff's Office, Detective Carter at 615-442-1865 or B. Carter at Sumner, SumnerSheriff.com. That's B. Carter at SumnerSheriff.com. Tips can be provided to Sumner County Emergency Communications at 615 4 Five one three eight three eight or one eight hundred TBI find friends. I'm going to leave you with this in hopes that you will be praying, praying without ceasing that Sebastian Rogers is found. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and tap the bell. Thank you. Bye-bye now.